I'm Dino Stamatopoulos. I uh, work at uh, the Moral Oral Studios. Uh, I write on it and think of things and tell people what to do there. Um, this uh, first episode is uh, Numb, and I wrote it actually for season two, but we, uh, we had too many episodes and ran out of money, frankly, so we couldn't do it. And um, so I saved it for the first episode of this season. And uh, um, you'll see in the opening, I wanted to start the season a little differently because it's uh, the season sort of takes place in tandem with the last episode from <clears throat> season two, Nature, or some episodes actually take place before it, and then a couple will take place after the big pivotal nature episode that everyone's talking about everywhere. Yeah, so I, I wanted to start it in a special way. So instead of God's hands opening the clouds, we don't have God's hands, and um, and we go down toward the church, but then make a sharp left to Oral's house and and go through his roof and into Clay and Bluberta's his parents. Uh, bedroom. Also, I, uh, the music is completely different, as you've noticed, probably. Um, that's the Mountain Goats. Uh, Nick Weidenfeld from Adult Swim turned me on to the Mountain Goats, and especially the song, and uh, I loved it immediately. And uh, I had already written this episode, but I thought it would go perfectly with this episode, and I, I think you'll agree it does. Uh, the song is uh, called No Children, by the way, and you'll never hear those lyrics in the song. Uh, but you kind of get why it's called that. It's probably a good idea that these, uh, these people don't have children. I hope that our few remaining friends give up on trying to save us. I hope we come up to piss off the dumb few that forgave us I hope the fences we mended Fall down beneath their own weight And I hope we hang on past the last exit I hope it's already too late And I hope the junkyard a few blocks from here Someday burns down And I hope the rising black smoke carries me far away And I never come back to this town again In my life good wife and I hope you die I hope we both die see you in two days and men only bring what they need okay so uh, this scene uh, gives me a lot of nerdy satisfaction because uh, it was actually uh, first in the nature episode and now we're at another angle a little higher up on the second floor of their house where Blaberta is watching the same scene and we get to see it at another angle, which, you know, I think is fun and cool. I don't care if you don't. Don't need this or this or <coughs> definitely this. But now what's this? Oh, that's my favorite lucky shirt. So as you see, she's using a vibrator on herself and uh, <laughs> I think the cameramen are itching to watch this episode. <clears throat> um, we uh, we really uh, painstakingly uh, looked for the right sound effect for this, and the guys uh, next door at Margarita Mix, where we mix sound, uh, they actually went uh, across the street uh, on Santa Monica Boulevard and uh, to the sex shop and bought uh, a real vibrator. And, um, and I said I wanted to get that kind of sound as if it's in something moving around. And uh, I wasn't there when they recorded it. I, um, I don't really know how they got that sound, but uh, it sounds good. Now this is a freeze frame shot. It, uh, 
you have a lot of uh, the uh, uh, names of the products. I, what I wanted to get across here is that she started out with a small vibrating uh, equipment and gradually she needed bigger and bigger things and they're all kind of like uh, hardware store tools uh, as you see Tiny Johnston's toothpick sander uh, is the first one named after our good friend Jay Johnston who works on the show and uh, you know you freeze frame it you'll be able to I think read it yourself some of them's hard the Casanova battery powered q-tip Dr. Inventor's Lower Back DC Powered Okie Dokie Izer, or if you take the first initials, it spells out dildo. Uh, Miss Ecstasy's Electric Rolling Pin, Hole in One, Motorized Golf Ball Digger, and then the one she was using, uh, Mr. Wonderful Wonderfully Drills Holes in Wood. She used that on her vagina. So this is the moment that I thought everyone would be waiting for, although nobody might be waiting for it, where uh, <clears throat> she realizes she has the wrong kid. Last season, halfway through, or a little toward the beginning, um, Shapey got mixed up with another kid, Block, and now they had, they've had Block for, you know, I'd say about a year now. And, uh, and she finally realizes it, and, uh, and she's... Um, as you'll see what, what, what happens. I'm not going to give it away. Pop it posable. So this is, uh, this is one of those uh, jokes in the uh, telephone book that uh, I thought of, uh, you know, when uh, the prop people came up to me, the set designer, Ross, who did a great job, said, do you want a joke with all these uh, names in the phone book? And I thought about it, and I thought, maybe it's interesting if every letter, you know, if, it was, if every name was completely in alphabetical order using every letter. So as you see, a posable is surrounded by, before it, a posabald, and then a posabulf right after it. And they sort of come out, they butterfly out from each side. So... You, uh, it's it's a hard joke to explain, but if you freeze frame it, you're gonna you're gonna love it. This is Blaberta Puppington. Don't hang up. Remember a few months ago when you and your family were over for dinner? I think we may have accidentally switched babies, and I'd like to switch back for sentimental reasons. So this is the exterior of the house that Shapey's been living in for a while now, and uh, also uh, Christina lives there, who's Oral's. Um, you know, I don't want to say girlfriend. They didn't really. Uh, I don't think they uh, they they made any commitment, um, and she moved away. But I think he has a soft spot in his heart for her. And later on in the season, we'll come back to this house uh, for another episode. Uh, but right now, um, they're about to trade off kids, and uh, it doesn't really go as planned. Okay, so uh, they have, uh, now she has both kids. Um, and uh, right at this point, you're seeing a dissolve happening that we do a lot. Uh, it's not very subtle, uh, but, um, you know, I, I always like to do this where Shapey, uh, Shapey is in the exact position that Coach Stopframe is, um, sort of cinematically telling you that uh, Shapey is Coach Stopframe's kid. No, no, I don't want to. Well, you liked me once. What happened? I needed to get closer. 
to me. <laughs> no. To him. I'm sorry. Oh, wait. No, I'm not. I don't care. Wow. What a freeing thought. <laughs> So, uh, this is another freeze frame. Time to hit the sauce, toasting him upon the cross. You don't really need to read that. All you need to know is she looks at the picture of the church, and now her attention is toward God and Reverend Putty, and she goes to him now. <laughs> Liberta, what brings you... Reverend, I want you. Uh, uh, I'm sorry? I need you. I have this feeling. Oh, well, uh, meet me at the church repression. No, uh, I want to be with you. I want your mind, your body. Oh, I want to get close to you oh, in any uh, way, mm. touch you anywhere. Mm, I'm only. yours. All yours. I'm done. What? I'm done. Go away. Go a million miles away. Yeah, so Reverend Putty uh, came in his pants. Uh, am, am I allowed to say that? Sure. We, if not, we can just bleep it out. All right. Well, don't bleep it. He came in his pants. Yeah. Um, and uh, you're about to uh, see the one and only real joke in the whole episode. No hammers hardware. It's just my name! Hello, Mr. No Hammer. Oh, please, Mrs. Puppington, call me Don. I'm sorry. Don. Haven't seen you in a while. What can I do for you? Could you refresh my memory? The aisle with all the uh, cylindrical... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Up and in. Oh, right. No hammers hardware. Yes, we have hammers. No, it's just my name! Hmm. Now, I think this sound uh, <clears throat> is actually uh, some kind of a electric saw with a, a piece of wood attached to it that they had around the studio. And we had uh, one of our uh, smaller uh, people around there, uh, Rosa, who's Asian, which, you know, that explains why she's so small. Uh, kind of hold it, and, and I think we videotaped her and showed the animator how she was kind of led around by this thing. And also, I think we used the sound for uh, that you're hearing for that contraption. Some injury, Mrs. Puppington. Mm, it's bad. Bad? Oh, no, 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 no. Not bad at all. Uh, you'll see we're cutting back and forth uh, between Blaberta's legs, the doctor's point of view, and Blaberta's. The legs on Blaberta's point of view, when we see the doctor, they're actually made of silicone. They're the new legs that we, uh, the new skin that we use this season uh, that doesn't wrinkle but we used an old puppet for the other angle, and you'll see her legs at that angle are wrinkled. Uh, so that's two different kinds of legs for uh, you uh, people keeping track of legs out there. Oh, it, it seems bad. Well, bad is relative. You see, I became a doctor because blood and injuries don't affect me the way they do most normal people. Mm -hmm. The good Lord gave me the gift of not being disgusted by horrible lacerations or avulsions. <laughs> Quite the contrary. Lucky. Mm. So, do I need stitches? No! <laughs> no, no. Not on your dainty little life. Here, <clears throat> I'm prescribing you 80 milligrams of Incensitab. This uh, character of uh, Dr. Potter's Wheel is actually... Uh, that's animated on one set. That was animated by Chris Calvey, who's a great animator. And the other angle it was an, on another set, um, uh, and that, that, that was animated by Tom, Tom Smith, who's also equally as, as great as Chris. And uh, uh, But I think it's interesting that these 
two characters were nowhere near each other when they were uh, doing, uh, you know, when it was actually being animated. Um, I think this shot of Reverend Putty, we only had Liberta's legs. Maybe the puppet was kind of bent downward uh, so we wouldn't see the back of her head or anything. Take two pills every six hours or whatever. What do they do? Well, they're just a high-level painkiller that'll simply repress those nagging warning signs you get when your body desperately vies for your attention. Hmm. <laughs> nice. Just, uh, keep on doing whatever it is you're doing. Don't change your habits in the name of health or any other New Agey claptrap. Hmm, okay. And when the pills cease to have any effect, just come in and I'll take a good, hard look. Then I'll raise the dosage. Ah, oh, you sure do take Good care of me, Doctor. My pleasure, Mrs. Puffington. You've got a wonderfully sensitive body there, but it can take a lot of abuse. <laughs> Call me Bliberta. Mm -hmm. mm. So yeah, she uh, fell asleep while the uh, jackhammer was inside her, uh, but she's taking the pills, so uh, she's not going to feel anything. Uh, I should state at this point, I haven't stated yet, that uh, this episode was directed by Chris McKay, who did an amazing job. You'll see there's a shot at the very end that uh, he figured out how to do, uh, and uh, did an amazing job with that. So this scene has the uh, only uh, incidental music in the, the episode. I wasn't gonna, I didn't want really any uh, incidental music. Uh, I just wanted it just to be a very cold, numb episode. Um, but Nick Weidenfeld said, you know, I think this needs a little music. So we, uh, uh, I talked to Mark Rivers and uh, decided on something kind of like, um, out of One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest, like that would be in the background playing, since she's all drugged up. Uh, so it's a very, uh, you know, muzak happy song as all these horrible things are happening to her. <laughs> Bad? <laughs> There's that word again. It really hurts, Doctor. Mm -hmm. Describe your pain. Please. Uh, <clears throat> please. Well, <laughs> this is steady, throbbing pain. Uh, pulsating through my whole lower body. Uh, burns intensely uh, as it creeps uh, down from my hips, shooting ever so slow. <laughs> Doctor? Doctor Potter's wheel? Uh, <clears throat> well, you seem to be doing nicely. Let's up that prescription, shall we? So that was kind of a difficult shot uh, to get across that <coughs> he um, he's putting the handkerchief in his pocket and is distracted and it falls out onto her leg and she uh, snatches it without him looking. It was, it was a, a tough shot. I think we shot it a couple times uh, just to make sure it didn't look like he was dropping the hand handkerchief on purpose. Uh, I don't know if it really, if that's obvious or not, but uh, now it is. Quentin Xavier. So Melissa, who did this shot, uh, she, she's a fairly new uh, animator, or animatrix, if you will, uh, and she did a great job, um, but we really put a lot of pressure on her, because this is a key moment um, where 
uh, Liberta is able to have an orgasm without actually hurting herself. Uh, just s s the slightest touch, as you'll see. And um, it had to really look like she was uh, having a pleasurable experience because every other experience she's had was painful and it couldn't look like pain. And uh, I don't know if any of you have had an orgasm out there, but uh, the difference between the look of pain and the look of pleasure is a very subtle one, uh, especially for me. I... I don't understand. There's no change from this morning. Why are you back here showing me this? I'm showing you because you've cured me, Doctor. Oh? I don't need to use that horrible apparatus anymore. Really? Then what do you use? You. I... I thought of you. That's all it took. Oh. Well, then you can go. Go? Yeah, sure, fine then. Just pay Nurse Bendy on the way out. So starting here, uh, it's Liberta's point of view for the rest of the shot. Um, I felt like we needed a point of view shot here um, sort of to balance out the next point of view shot. This is Liberta's story. So <clears throat> right now we're just seeing everything through her, her eyes. And then uh, the next shot will be Clay's point of view, which uh, Chris McKay uh, beautifully orchestrated. Uh, as you'll see, it's coming up. But um, and uh, one of the uh, pieces of direction uh, we gave Chris Calvi, who animated this, was uh, that uh, after the moment where Bilberta tells Doctor Potter's wheel, uh, "You gave me this orgasm." Uh, he can't even look at her. So I wanted to do sort of a kind of a, a sideways step when he's uh, moving back and forth. So he, he can't, he doesn't even want to, uh, he doesn't even want to see Liberta in his periphery. Um, and then Chris, uh, it's a really funny shot, I think. You don't even care about me. <laughs> well, I care for you. <laughs> I'm a doctor. But... I thought that you really... Mrs. Puppington, you'll be fine. I think you're just a little stressed out from the injury. Uh, you can't even bear to look at me. Excuse me. I need to help my other patients now. <sighs> yes? Clay Puppington? Put him on. Yes, Clay, what can I do for you? Oral? Well, who shot him? Oh, <laughs> had a few too many highballs, eh? Well, bring him in and I'll discreetly treat the boy. You better go. Okay, so here's the, um, the point of view shot of Clay. Uh, we actually use it again in another episode. That's how much I liked it. Um, it's, uh, it seems very uh, fluid and, and that it is like one shot actually three shots um, in the study is one shot uh, that was uh, John Harvatine did that point of view shot then from the hallway through the living room up the stairs was another set and that was uh, uh, Tennessee did that one um, and then Upstairs in the hallway, around into their bedroom, that was Liz Harvatine, John's, uh, John's wife. Uh, and uh, so all three of these animators came together with Chris's direction, and uh, it's pretty seamless, I think. And it's, it's also like just a wet dream of mine to actually walk through a little miniature set and pretend you're walking through it. I hope I cut myself shaving tomorrow. I hope it bleeds all day long. Our friends say it's darkest before the sun rises. We're pretty sure they're all wrong. Yummy. I hope it stays dark forever. I hope the Ooh, worst isn't bad. over. And I hope you blink before I die. Yay, birdie. And I hope I never get sober. And I hope when you think of me years down the line, you can't find one good 
something to say And I'd hope that if I found the strength to walk out You'd stay the hell out of my way oh, well, <laughs> why not? Of course, you're hearing the second part of No Children by the Mountain Goats And um, I think we play actually the whole song uh, in the beginning and the end put together uh, right now what's happening is Clay is listening outside Oral's door and this is another scene from nature which is another point of view where Oral's asking his mom why'd you even marry this guy he's so abusive and what we didn't know in the nature episode was that he was actually outside the door listening I didn't even know it uh, until uh, I wrote it into the script this season most of this episode was written last season but I added a lot to, uh, you know, so it coincides with the nature episode. Well, it's just that when he drinks, he changes. Oh, he doesn't change, Oral. That's just his true nature coming out. <laughs> I am drowning. There is no sign of land. You are coming down with I really love this last shot because uh, it comes after the lyrics I hope we both die and they're just laying there and it sort of to me as an afterthought looks like they're just lying in their graves dead and certainly they're just pretty much waiting for death anyway um, funny show huh Uh, thanks for watching. That was the premiere episode. And uh, if you think that was funny, just stick around for the rest of the episodes. Thanks. <laughs>